family, to have a family name, to have a family reputation. We're a very individualistic society. The family name is like a brand. And it's about your reputation. It's literally about your face, uh, how you are perceived by others. If they have a woman that, that doesn't conform, then that is going to impact upon them. They might be cut out of the economic life of the community. They might not be able to shop. They might not be able to trade. Because their behaviour reflects not upon themselves, but upon everyone around them, upon the whole collective, the whole family, the whole community. In 2002, the family tried to restore its honour. When I left home, I still kept in contact with my brother. I would call him every now and then. And I remember this particular time when I called him. He was very persuasive. He was very, you know, adamant that he wanted to meet me. He lured her to a remote location and he got her to carry a suitcase, walk along that path in front of me, don't turn around, don't look at what I'm doing. And he just hit me over the head of a dumbbell, a single arm weight. He put his arm around my neck, lifting me off my feet almost. You know, me panicking, I started moving around, trying to get myself free from him. I bit his arm in that bend of his arm, and I, you know, he let go, and then I dropped to the floor. He's trying to drag me by my feet on my back, and I kicked him, kicked on his knee, and he let go of me, and I stopped him. I said to him, look, look what you're doing. You're actually trying to kill me. And I'm saying this, screaming it out to him, and he stopped for a minute and he started crying like a woman. Prop, you know, really, really crying. And he said, I'm really sorry, but I'm, I'm the big boy, I'm the big man. After my dad, I have to do this. Put a shame to an end. That is, that is exactly his words, actually. And he told me that um, my dad actually paid him. My dad paid him to do this to me. He, the plan was basically to kill me. So he had to take care of me, try and get rid of me, the problem. Bekal did not report her brother and went into hiding. So all of this was going on in the, in the background before, um, before Benaz and what happened to her. At the age of 17, Banaz was married. His name was Ali. It was an arranged marriage, a man that she'd only ever met on one previous occasion. And he was literally just off the plane for, from Iraq. Um, they had absolutely nothing in common. He was illiterate and very strongly adherent to that Kurdish culture. So what she would describe as very old-fashioned. These societies are traditionally patrilocal. When a woman is married, she moves in to the household of her husband, to the household of her husband's father, and that she lives there with the relatives of her husband, that she's, in fact, quite isolated from her own family. There is a kind of pride in arranging good marriages, which may not be good marriages in the quality of the relationship, but are good marriages in that they build the status of the family. And that's why she has to behave herself that represents her family, that keeps that relationship between the two families strong. After two years of marriage, in 2005, Banaz went to the police. She said she wanted to make a report about the way her husband had been treating her. So describe your relationship then from the from the very early stages through to when things started to to go wrong for you. He he was just like um he was thinking like in fifty years back, um like, he was a strict husband. Um, 
whenever he wanted to have sex, it was just his way, always his way. Like, whenever I said no or he wouldn't take no for an answer, and, um, he would just start raping me and doing what he liked to do. I tried to stop him, but he would slap me or hit me on the back or just pull me by the hair. I just start to, like, cover my body, like, hold on like that. That's it. That's when he said to me he would kill me if I said anything to anyone. I, I would get out of the bedroom, go to the bathroom. I cried a lot. But when I came out, he just acted like nothing has happened then. I was just 17 there. Then. Some of the times it was in the living room that he raped me, or in the bedroom. I didn't know if this was normal in my culture or in here. I was only 17, so I just let him do what he liked whenever he raped me. It was like I was his shoe and he would wear it just whenever he, he felt like it. Ali had told me to, if anyone had seen me, just tell them that you fell in the bathroom. He made me believe that my family had loved him more than they loved me, and if I ever told anyone that he would kill me, or that I've got no family around me and they're far, far away from me, so he could do anything with me as he liked. I didn't try to offend my, defend myself or anything. I just cried and that was it. After I left her, I went to visit her and I did say to her, I said, you know, you look run down. And she said, yeah, I'm not enjoying my life. I'm doing just what exactly what he tells me to do, cleaning and cooking and everything else that he wanted her to do. Um, on one occasion, the, we, we just had guests and in my culture, like, women aren't, when they're married to their husbands, they're not allowed to call them by their names. Okay. So in front of the guest, I had called him by his name. So after the guest left, he told me that if I called him by his name the next time, even if there was a guest, he would, like, stick a knife in me. He threw a knife at me, no matter how far within that room I was from him. I tried to explain to him that, like, we're living in Britain, in the UK, and I was shocked because it's just a name. You know, it's not going to do any harm. He was, you know, physically, verbally, emotionally, and every other way you can think of abusing her degrading her, you know, all you're good for is doing, you know, being a housewife and for something, for this and for that. You're not good for nothing else. So he was getting worse and worse. Some of the times that he had beat me up or he was abusive towards me, I had to write it down in a diary. Mm -hmm. And I have taken some pictures um, of my body, like when he's being up, the bruises and stuff like that, and the clothes that he's ripped off me, but... Um, he had got hold of them and he knew that I wrote it down in a um, diary. So he destroyed them up. And because he had kicked me so much, like, in the head, my lips were bleeding, my ears were bleeding. Um, um, and he had, like, twisted my hand really strongly. That So um, one of the bones, it, it has like st stand out from my other wrist. Um.